Hi, everybody. I'm Stephanie Beers. I'm a nurse um, with the Melanoma Group. Um, I have been with the Cancer Institute for about 16 years now. I've done um, a lot of different types. Um, I've done a lot of different uh, tumor groups. I've been with Melanoma Group for about three years now. So I, um, it's it's sort of an exciting time in melanoma, at least in my experience, because I've been a nurse for a long time. I've seen a lot of different cancers. I've seen melanoma uh, years ago. There's a lot of new and innovative therapies. So, um, you know, I think uh, now, you know, we have a lot to offer patients. So um, I'm going to, uh, Jackie and I are going to talk about um, managing acute and chronic side effects of immunotherapies. Um, you know, uh, these therapies are good, but uh, they are not without their side effects. So the best way to treat them is to, uh, you know, to report them and to uh, uh, get them early. Okay, so we're just going to talk about what immune-related side effects are, why do they occur, um, acute symptom management, and then chronic symptom management. So um, Dr. Meaner, Dr. Silk have talked a lot about immune therapy. It basically harnesses the immune system. It wakes it up. It says, you know, it, it, it wakes it up. It tells them to start working again and to get rid of the cancer cells in our body. Um, you know, they're not supposed to be there. So that's what we're, that's what these immunotherapies are trying to do. Okay. This is an awake immune system. These are T cells. Um, <laughs> fighting the cancer cells, okay? Um, so immune-mediated side effects. So basically what happens when, when patients experience side effects to immune therapies, um, not only are the tumor cells being attacked, but our normal cells are affected too. They become, um, your T cells are activated. Um, they, lots of T cells can be activated. They invade our normal tissue. They attack and invade our normal tissue. Our tissue becomes inflamed. And once that tissue becomes inflamed, we, patients start to feel side effects. We feel things. Um, you'll often see that, um, you'll often hear the terms, the itises, um, thyroiditis, colitis, um, you know, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. You'll hear all of those things because our tissues, our normal tissues are inflamed. Okay. Um, the immune system becomes hyperactive is essentially what happens. Um, I thought this was a good slide in terms of explaining immunotherapy and its side effects. Um, the Hulk is, he's, you know, he's very strong. You know, when he gets upset, he, he, he's mad. He goes after the things that, you know, that need to be taken care of. But what happens in his way? A lot of things get harmed, whether it's a car on the side of the road, if you remember all the, if everybody remembers the show, you have the car on the side of the road, the ground be, uh, beneath him, you know, those are normal tissues. So if you can kind of think of it that way, and um, he doesn't mean to do it, but, you know, it just happens. All right. So these are uh, types of immune, immune immediated symptoms. So we can have um, your GI tract can be affected. You can have diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain. Um, our thyroid, our pituitary gland can be affected. So you can have, you can be tired, you can lose weight, you can have a headache, um, heart palpitations. Um, uh, some of the newer medicines, um, the uh, pembrolizumab and the nivolumab can affect your lungs. Your lung tissue can become inflamed, you get short of breath. Um, your liver get, can get inflamed. Um, uh, when our liver gets affected, you can have a yellowing of the skin or eyes. You can have abdominal um, pain with that. Your skin is affected. Often patients get rashes. Um, they can get skin peeling, itching. Um, you can have vision changes in your eyes. You can have pain or redness. Um, sometimes your nervous system is affected. You can have weakness, um, and you can have numbness and tingling in your extremities. Sometimes you can have confusion. Your musculoskeletal system, you can have painful inflamed joints. Okay, and these are the types of conditions that, again, that you see, um, that um, you may hear when you talk about it, when you hear about immunotherapy. So colitis, thyroiditis, pneumonitis, hepatitis, um, dermatitis, uveitis for the eyes. So those are often terms that you'll hear. Um, so immune-related side effects, they can occur at any point in treatment. They can occur early on. Most often, they can happen after several cycles of treatment. They can affect one or more organ systems. Um, they can be acute or they can be chronic, and they're very treatable with early recognition. All right. Um, acute side effects. So when something is acute, it happens suddenly or abrupt. 
okay? Um, one day you um, are not having diarrhea, the next day you are having diarrhea. One day you're not short of breath, the next day you are short of breath. Um, it also can be a mild symptom that persists or worsens over time. If you have um, a mild symptom, like a mild rash, uh, that is maybe only on your chest, but it persists over time, it goes to more, uh, it spreads to a greater percent of the body, you have, um, it's more red, that's something that worsens over time. Then that's a more acute effect that needs to be uh, reported. Um, acute effects need urgent care and they need medical workup. So when you, when something is happening, you know, if it's, a, if it's acute onset, just know in the back of your mind that you need to call your practitioner and you need to get urgent care, okay? Um, these are some types of acute symptoms, some of which I've already mentioned, shortness of breath, diarrhea, yellowing of the skin, um, fatigue, inter -functioning, uh, interfering with daily functioning, um, persistent nausea, vomiting, weight loss. Um, we talked about rash uh, greater than 30% of your body. All right. What patients need to know and what you need to do. You are going to call your healthcare provider. You're going to call your nurse. You're going to call your doctor. Um, you're going to call them. You're going to report those symptoms. You're going to tell them what the symptom is. You're going to tell them where it is. How long is it happening? What are precipitating factors? Okay. And then when you call, what I'd like to stress is, especially with an acute symptom, I want patients to be prepared because most times we're going to ask you um, to either get blood work, imaging studies, or you're going to need to come to see the doctor. Okay, because we're not always by the symptoms that you're telling us, we may have an idea of what's going on, but we're not 100% sure what's going on. And a phone call doesn't tell us everything. So depending on the symptom, you might have to have one of these things or you might have to have all of these things. So it's, it's, it's just keep in your mind that when you're having symptoms, you need to call, be prepared, because you might have to have an additional workup. Okay. Um, treatment of acute uh, side effects. So once we identify the side effect, most oftentimes um, these are inflammatory in nature, we can give steroids. Steroids will typically calm these symptoms down. Sometimes the steroids can be given orally, we can call into your pharmacy, um, and uh, you can just take them by mouth. Sometimes if the side effect is severe or it, is severe in nature, we may have to admit you to the hospital and you may need to get intravenous steroids because we want them to act quicker. Um, uh, once they're prescribed, um, they're typically at higher doses. Um, we will taper them over time. Um, you have to take them exactly as prescribed and do not stop them abruptly because when you stop them abruptly, you can have side effects. So never, never stop uh, your steroids abruptly. Um, some side effects from uh, the steroids, you can have increased appetite, you can have jitteriness, you can have weight gain. Um, you know, if you have any questions, always talk to your healthcare providers, talk to your nurses. That's what we're here for. We're, we're here for you to pick up the phone, call us. We're here to give you information to help you get through this. You're not going to know everything on your own. And, you know, always never be afraid to ask questions, okay? All right. Um, sometimes you need, might need a little bit more workup. Uh, one example is if you're having diarrhea, sometimes we may need to get a colonoscopy. Maybe we, the imaging studies we have um, aren't conclusive of colitis. Maybe we need to look a little bit further. Um, so you might, at times, you might need an invasive procedure. You will many times be referred to a specialist. So if you have a colitis, you're going to go see a gastroenterologist. If you have a diagnosis of pneumonitis, you're going to, you're going to go to pulmonology. You're going to have to be followed by a pulmonologist. If you have thyroid issues, if you have pituitary issues, you're going to need to be followed by an endocrinologist. So not only are you going to be worked up for, for your side effect and treatment of that side effect, but you also may be seen by additional spe specialists to help treat that particular problem. Um, you also may be given additional medications. Sometimes when your thyroid's inflamed, um, it burns out, it doesn't function properly, we are going to give you thyroid replacement. So you may need additional medications. So just keep that, keep that in mind that, you know, once we treat you to calm down the symptom, you may need to do some additional things, take some additional medication, see some additional specialists. Okay. Um, chronic. Chronic symptoms. So chronic side effects, chronic immune immediate side effects, you still may have some of the same side effects. They're long in duration. They may show little change. They're extremely slow. Um, sometimes they can flare. Um, 
they can flare up. Chronic symptoms require long-term monitoring and management, okay? They, and the one thing about immune-mediated side effects is that they can occur at any time during treatment and after treatment. Even if you've completed treatment, sometimes your immune system's primed. Sometimes it's just, you know, it, it can get hyperactive at times. So you always have to be cognizant in the back of your mind that if you're having a side effect, you know, think, I've had immunotherapy. Is this something that I need to report to, to your oncologist? Do I need to call my gastroenterologist? Do I need to call my endocrinologist? So those are just things to keep in mind uh, with chronic side effects. Okay, and again, types of chronic immune-mediated symptoms. They're very similar to some of the acute symptoms. There may be just mild um, symptoms that you're just monitoring over time and you're being cognizant of, and sometimes these can flare up again. Sometimes they can become acute, okay, and then you need to call, all right? Um, and I think I've, I've touched on this a few times. You're going to continue to monitor your symptoms. You're going to follow up with your specialists. Um, and you're not going to discontinue any supportive medications without speaking to your physician. Okay. Same slide. Same thing. All right. Same, same rules apply to acute versus chronic symptoms. Okay, and these are just types of doctors that you may see, and, I, and I've spoken about that already. Gastroenterologists, endocrinologists, you always call your oncologist. All right. All right, I'm going to let Jackie take the last few. Hi, I'm Jackie Norell. I'm an advanced practice nurse here at the Kansas Institute. And um, I arrived here uh, recently, within the last year and a half, and I had my eye on um, the Kansas Institute in 2003, and I actually slowly worked my way uh, from a career in IT into uh, the Institute, and um, I'm happy to be here, and um, I'm ha you know, I feel a, a privilege to um, uh, be involved in the care of uh, our melanoma patients. Um, so I'm in the, in the context of toxicities. Um, I think one important aspect regarding the care that's received here is uh, we have a multidisciplinary approach to care. So an initial encounter um, to the, uh, with the Cancer Institute uh, and a path through melanoma typically would be um, your, your dermatologist, an appointment here, uh, an encounter with uh, Dr. Goidos and Lolita and Jasmine, and, uh, and then uh, possible and um, hopefully referral to MedOnc um, for um, treatment. I mean, uh, you know, um, a highlight for a cancer diagnosis might be uh, short-term treatment or um, uh, surveillance. Um, but uh, for those that arrive uh, to medical oncology, um, we're well equipped to um, assess for um, symptoms uh, of toxicity. So toxicity is, um, you know, the uh, ability to damage a biological system by means of a chemical. Immunotoxicity, um, adverse effect on the structure and function of the immune system. I'd argue there's a little more to that, but at the end of the day, um, reprogramming of the immune system so that will maintain homeostasis without the need for continuous treatment is kind of the holy grail. Um, okay. So um, my, um, my excerpt uh, is more of a kind of a touchy-feely uh, approach that um, we care about you um, as a patient and the quality of your life. And uh, it doesn't just confine itself to uh, a treatment modality. You know, on a typical visit, we will ask you, you know, um, about other aspects of your life. And, and, and it's often the case that we're not your, necessarily your primary care provider, but we will direct and guide in that context. So, um, you know, typically, you know, um, quality of life measures are to look at health outcomes. Um, um, or uh, determine the impact of health care. Um, but some of the domains that um, regarding, as it relates directly to toxicity, uh, is, um, you know, how do you feel? You know, um, physically, fatigue, fatigue, we assess fatigue, pain, 
and uh, we extend that uh, interrogation to uh, distress. You know, what's going on in your life? And it's not necessarily what's happening physically, what's happening psychologically, what's happening financially. And um, we will often gear treatment around all aspects, um, not just physiologic. So um, this is a little, uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, a little plug for Mr. Bowie. Um, so uh, age-associated changes. Um, you know, um, immunosenescence, you know, we, we're aging, you know, during the course of your treatment, um, each one of us is aging. So there's certain things that happen uh, during the normal course of aging. And so immunosenescence uh, refers to the gradual deterioration of the immune system brought on by natural um, age advancement. Um, it involves both the host capacity to respond to uh, infections and the development of long-term immune memory, especially by vaccination. So um, and as you age, the immune system becomes slower to respond, and your, your body may heal more slowly. Um, so, and the ability to, to, uh, to detect and correct cell defects uh, also declines. Uh, and you, you may possibly develop an, an immune disorder. So, um, you know, in that context, it's not necessarily scientific, but anecdotally, that um, we may want to consider that a slow and steady response to treatment is still an adequate and acceptable uh, response. And um, in, in the words of a, uh, um, a medical, a well-known medical professional, that, you know, uh, we'd like to debunk the myth that el um, elder patients are not eligible or do not do well on immunotherapy. Um, so I'm going to just look at this. Um, you know, and then in the context of looking at the whole patient, you know, looking at the full clinical picture and looking at the whole pa patient. Epigenetics, we spoke about this uh, earlier. Uh, it looks at how your environment and um, over time can affect how your genes work and influence the, the develop, uh, development of health and aging. Um, you know, the NIH, NIH has a whole s uh, section dedicated to aging. Um, but it, it's important to remember that in an individual's prognosis, uh, patient's prognosis and um, uh, treatment stat strategy cannot be based only on a single biopsy. And I think uh, Dr. Maynard and Dr. Silk touched on that earlier. Um, personalized medicine based on both genetic and epigenetic changes of cancer is the future. And the question remains, how long will it take to tra transport this treatment from the bench to the bedside? I think we're there. So, uh, you know, we're closely there. So again, in terms of the quality of life domain, as it relates to the whole clinical picture, um, these are just uh, some measures that ha have been well established over the last uh, 40 plus years as important in terms of grading, um, uh, you know, a, um, a quality of life um, measure. Um, you know, and, and a lot of it has to do, I mean, socializing, um, personal expression, you know, being able to get out of bed in the morning, interact, um, and if you're not feeling well um, and you're on therapy, knowing who to call. Um, so again, uh, we uh, move into our multidisciplinary approach to care, and it's an integrated team approach. So we have a triage line. Um, we have um, individual uh, contact. I think the triage line is uh, one of the most beneficial um, strategies we have in symptom management in addition to the personal care we provide. And um, a multidisciplinary approach to care, uh, patient-specific treatment plans are developed and delivery of care becomes a shared responsibility. And uh, again, in terms of the toxicities, um, you, you know, all know our names. <laughs> you have our numbers. And um, so regular communication among team members. Um, access to a full range of therapeutic options. We're an NCI designated cancer center. Um, you know, it's we're not a we're kind of a one-stop shop, um, and we in our evaluations, um, if a, a toxicity does develop, there are other treatment strategies um, we have to offer, and um, I think that's about it.